I was 15 years old when my grandmother walked downstairs to the house she was actually born in with an old croaker sack, this long, skinny canvas bag. And she handed it to me and said, honey, I want you to have this. I took it out and there was this old antique gun, unlike anything I'd ever seen. Colt 1878 double hammer gun. I, I, I cleaned it my whole childhood. I cleaned it the whole. But I remember taking it to a gunsmith and him saying, don't ever shoot this gun, it's about powder. Uh, you can damage it, you can do this. And uh, I, I cleaned that, took it out every year out of the closet and cleaned it and looked at it and studied it and I wondered who it was. I, she didn't know. Nobody knew. And you always wonder, boy, if this gun could talk. And years later she died and my mother was cleaning out the attic and she found this drawing. And she gave it to me that Christmas and I, I loved it. It's a nice little drawing of a couple of duck hunters and a skiff, timber very much like this. It's an old cypress marsh in Mississippi and there's ducks falling. Simple little drawing. And I thanked her and she said, well, don't you see who drew it? And I, I didn't recognize the name Sally McNeil, who was my great grandmother. That was her maiden name. And we just realized that, that whatever she was depicting at the age of 16 in the late 1800s, early 1900s was likely her father or granddaddy and the owner of the shotgun. And it began to speak to me. I mean, you wonder, you know, it just began to speak to me, well, the gun couldn't be shot. And I did a little research and I talked to some knowledgeable people about black powder guns and about Damascus barrels. And one of them finally suggested, well, he started talking about the value of it. I'm like, there is no value. I just, it's a family heirloom. It's, it's, it's my heritage. It's who I am. I want to shoot it. I want to kill a duck with it. And we began the, the project of uh, boring it out, putting some 20 gauge sleeves into it so it would handle conventional ammunition and, and not damage the bores. Of course, first we had to go through the gun. We realized uh, one of the firing pins was broke, one of the springs was broke. Easier said than done on a gun this old, having it restored. And I knew the perfect place. I knew the perfect place I wanted to shoot this gun. This, 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 this Bobo break up here with Jim Cruz is, is ancient. It's older than Mississippi. The, the gun was built pre-Migratory Bird Treaty Act, and I, and I just can only imagine that my ancestor hunted something very much like this in LaFleur County, Mississippi. Boy, this gun could talk, the stories it could tell back in those days. I can't imagine what he must have seen back in those days. And it, it just, it's funny how an inanimate object like a firearm connects you to your past, connects you to who you really are. I feel like I feel like, you know, this is who I am, is it, it, this gun. It's like it was meant to be. It's like all these years, for decades, 40 years, it's been whispering to me from the closet to, to take, take, take the ghost of my ancestors back to the swamp. And this morning, I, I mean, you, I wonder, oh Lord, don't let me miss. I, I've never shot this gun. I don't know how it's patterned. I don't know what it's doing. And last night, Jim was telling me, oh, yeah, you know, that gun's probably just gonna call a duck right in. And this morning, the first green head turned. And my head was spinning. I mean, you know, I never, when, when do you pull the hammers back on a hammer gun? I knew when. The minute he got down wind and, and cupped those wings and started coming in, I knew exactly when to cock back. And then, by gosh, 15, 20 yards on the deck, he fluttered right over our cork decoys. And the rest is history. 